else did I do with my day? I went to rehearsal, which is interesting and uh, and rich, emotionally complicated, challenging work that I'm very lucky to do. And I came away with a lot of really fascinating stories about both the artistic process as an actor and and um, and uh, and working through Tennessee Williams, you know, which is a uh, is not my favorite playwright. I certainly have a great deal of admiration for Tennessee Williams, but he does not sing to me the way other playwrights do. Um, I know he's he's much beloved, certainly by my mother, who's a huge Tennessee Williams fan. Um, but it, it is really a pleasure to work with the text in the room and to explore it and pull things out of it. And um, the, the cast and, and crew in the room are all very funny. And, and talented and, and they challenge me and they challenge each other and really I have a lot of things to, to say about the process which I think would be funny and edifying and um, I think that's not in keeping with what the podcast is doing so I'm not going to tell you those stories uh, instead I will um, tell you about the building that our rehearsals are in um, I don't know what color it is because I can't remember. Um, and the inside is sort of, maybe it's kind of yellow. I guess it's yellow. I don't really pay a lot of attention, but I guess it's a yellow building on the inside. And it's got a floor and um, a ceiling to keep out the sky uh, and walls which separate the, the rooms from each other, but also the building from the outside world. Uh, I, th I think it's yellow, but uh, it really has a beige energy. So it's just like sitting in beige, spiritually speaking, in this building. You can really feel it permeate every bit of you. So if I'm playing a beige character, you know, someone whose favorite color is is beige, and they um, they dress a lot in uh, in beige, and um, their their skin tone is, is kind of beige, and uh, uh, their 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 favorite dessert is um, just a little vanilla ice cream. Oh, that's nice, and. Um, they, they go to bed at 11 o'clock and they they wake up at um, you know 7 30 uh, and they they think that's sleeping in because because it's half an hour more than eight hours and um, they only brush their teeth teeth twice a day um, and they definitely floss but but not as much as they ought to uh, if that's the character I'm playing then that building is a really great place to do it. If I'm playing, um, well, really, if I'm playing any other character, then that building is a horror show. Um, it transforms every emotion that you can pull out of yourself and every technical accomplishment of your body and your voice uh, and and transforms it into oatmeal just reduces everything you throw at it just swallows it up the rooms are so big they're so big and yet they feel cramped I don't know how it does it um, just just voices get eaten uh, you can be so close to each other and you, you can't hear each other across the void of this yellow beige building that that eats just eats, 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 eats everything it comes in contact with, you know just eats and I'm here, I'm here doing the Tennessee Williams play which is really really beyond what I'm capable of you know as an artist I think it's, it's beyond me I think I have to admit that it's just you know he 
he wants you to 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 pour all your lyricism into his his language but also to just feel so many feelings a hot hot torrent of feelings and also he wants you to be very pretty all of his men his gorgeous men he describes him in the stage directions as beautiful and, and tall and icy and sexually inaccessible and i'm i'm average looking at best i'm not tall and sexually i'm really accessible you know like like i'm you know how like they're like challenging foods and less challenging foods you know so like there's um there's a there's a there's a, there's cheddar you know which is a sort of unchallenging kind of cheese and um and then there's like a roquefort uh which is a little more complex you know and it has a stronger a stronger smell you know and and is, is more challenging and um and more expensive you know so it's it's a food you have to like get a lot of work before you can can really enjoy um sexually speaking i'm um i am cheese whiz i'm so accessible you don't, i'm not sure you want it anymore you know like once late at night you you got drunk and you went out and you um you you had a sandwich and uh the sandwich was like a, a, the only shot that was open you know after all the bars closed and and you had this electric high of the evening that you had just experienced and 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 you felt connected to all the people that you were with and and it felt special somehow and and you're carrying that energy out in the world and, and you really ought to go home and you, you've gone kind of past your limits but you you want to just soak in this moment a little while longer and you you go out and um and you get a cheese steak and you put cheese whisk on and it tastes so good um and then then you and and uh someone else in your group you know you feel everyone peel away you know until it's just you but you're still contained in that that white hot energy from going out that feeling that this is special and we are all connected um and then and then you wake up the next day and like you just have the the drippiest oiliest shits from the sandwich you ate and you can't remember the person in your bed's name uh that's cheese whiz so yeah I'm not sure that I'm great casting for Tennessee Williams I guess is what I'm trying to say and um, so I am I am you know throwing everything I got into it um, in this building which I'm reviewing I'm reviewing the building for Eric Harrison a podcast a podcast about reviewing buildings and um just trying to evoke pain and bitterness and both sexual desire and, and inaccessibility and, you know, uh, late normal eroticism and the building just eats that up. And um, you're left with just like this residue of squeaky shoes on tile floors and a faint smell of pine saw. Um, so I guess three out of five stars for that building. Uh, three and a half if you like beige. Um, this is, God, how long has this gone on? It has to have been hours now. This is minute 27 of Eric Harris in a podcast. It is Saturday. February 8th, 8.16 p.m. And the timer says that we have one hour and six minutes to go. And my mouth is getting parched. So, um, up next, uh, a review of my glass of seltzer. Uh, 
um, that wasn't seltzer, that was water left on the bedside table that I'd forgotten about that I confused with my seltzer and I don't know how water can taste dry and dusty but somehow it does and I went back for a second sip and I genuinely do not know why um, I'm in bed right now because um, it's the only piece of furniture I like and also I can cuddle the computer close to me for audio you really want to make sure that that Eric Harrison podcast is the finest quality audio recording. Um, so let's let's tell a bedtime story. Let's tell the story of um, Princess Princess Penelope Pencilfucker in the in the in the poltergeist dimension. Once upon a time, there was a princess, and, and her name was Penelope Pencilfucker. The etymology of her family name is lost to time. The, the, the kings and queens of the Pencilfucker line uh, went, went back for, for many generations and, and no one could remember when anyone other than a pencil fucker ruled in the, in the kingdom and uh, Penelope Penelope was um, one of the seven princesses seven daughters of Paul, King King Paul, Polinius, King Polinius, um, pencil fucker. He had seven daughters. Um, he had uh, Pearl, um, Pearl, and and obviously Penelope, pencil fucker, and um, Pearl was the oldest, and and Penelope was the youngest. Pearl. Penelope, uh, Pauline was the second oldest, uh, Peaches, Puce, Pumpersnickel, Peaches, Peaches, Pauline, Puce, Pumpersnickel, um, Podcast, Pabulum and um, others were the were the pencil fucker daughters, and 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 Penelope was the youngest, and all of the the elder pencil fuckers, um, they 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 all they all went on adventures. Um, uh, Pearl, pencil fucker, uh, slayed a dragon, and and uh, Puce, Puce pencil fucker, um, rescued uh, seven princes from um, an evil witch who forced them to dance till they till they died, and um, and uh, and uh, podcast uh, pencil fucker was. Uh, a renowned jewelry thief, um, but but Penelope struggled to have adventures of her own because every time she went out into the world to go have an adventure, she'd find find one of her older sisters already there, adventuring the fuck out of it, and and leaving no adventure left for her. And, and Penelope pencil fucker uh, rested her head on 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 her her beautiful horse um, horse face 
after, after discovering that, that once again, Pauline pencil fucker had beaten her to the cave of the, uh, the ogre and, and had already befriended him and, and learned the secret of his delicious cakes and that there was no more adventure left to be had. And, um, so Penelope weeped into Horace Face's mane as she trotted, well, cantered away from, from the ogre's cave. And she said, Oh no! You know, like she said, Oh no! I'll never, I'll never adventure in, in these realms. And there was an explosion. Um, and, and, and Penelope Pencil Fuck was like, oh no! And, and now the explosion came, um, uh, 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 a, 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 a person in a long black and red robe with a floating skull head. And, and he said, Penelope Pencil Fuck! And Penelope said, yeah. You, you have summoned me. And Penelope Pencilfucker said, What, seriously? And the the dude guy said, Totally, you have. I'm, I'm the lord of the, the poltergeist dimension. Um, and Penelope Pencilfucker, who was very quick on the uptake, was like, <gasps> And he said, Yeah, pr- pretty cool. I I will take you to the poltergeist dimension, a realm beyond this realm, where there are no pencil fucker sisters whatsoever. And you, you can adventure the shit out of things. Just adventure all over the place. We got crap loads of adventures in the poltergeist dimension, and no pencil fucker sisters at all. And so... Penelope Pencilfucker 